Okay, so we're gonna finish Big Things Come in Small Packages. We have two chunks left. We're gonna handle them in the same video. We're gonna start with lines 184 to 237, and then we're gonna look at 237 to the end of the story. Um, okay, so there are two things we need to pay attention to as we read um, this chunk. The first thing we need to pay attention to is how Tucker's conflict is resolved. So think back to um, the conflict that you identified earlier on, the problem Tucker had or the issue he was having. Um, and then in this section, how does that problem get fixed or get solved or how do things change for him? Um, and it asks you to make note of that in the margin on the side of the, the, sh the short story. And then the second thing asks us to pay attention to what Tucker learns about Richard, specifically in these lines here. So it doesn't ask us to underline or circle anything, but that doesn't mean that you can't, and I certainly would, um, especially in this section here, lines 216 to 237. As I read that, I would underline what we actually are learning about Richard, um, because that's going to help you. It's going to make it easier for you to summarize um, what he's learned about him when it comes time to do so. Okay, so we're right here. The reporter interviewed everybody and took pictures of Tucker, Nibbles, and Tucker's dad, who almost had a heart attack when he heard what happened. When the reporter asked how such a small boy was able to rescue a big grown man, Tucker said, because I'm a tugboat, like Richard said, we pull the big ones in. But when Tucker turned around to point out Richard, he couldn't find him. The reporter's story about Tucker's rescue was in the local paper, then got picked up by the Associated Press and went all over the world. CBS TV even flew him and his folks to New York to be on its morning show. Afterwards, back home in Moorhead, Moorhead City, strangers stopped Tucker on the street, in stores, even came to his home. They wanted to see the little tugboat that hauled in that big man and get his autograph. Businesses up and down Arundel Street put up welcome home tugboat posters in their windows, and there was a parade. Tucker was a hero. He and the mayor rode on the back of a big old white Cadillac convertible and waved at everybody. I was so proud that I almost forgot and hollered out, way to go, Tootsie Roll, but I caught myself in time. Everybody, even local folks, called Tucker Tugboat after that, including us kids, We'd never seen a real live hero close up before, especially one our age. It wasn't cool anymore to tease him with those other names. Funny how things can turn right around, isn't it? And you know what? Tucker grew to be six feet five. He played on the North Carolina Central University Eagles basketball team, joined the U.S. Coast Guard, and lives in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, on the Outer Banks. But there's something Tucker never figured out. When he first told people that Richard was the real hero, nobody believed him. Apparently, nobody but Tucker had seen Richard, not even Mr. Nibbles. There's more. When Tucker went into the pipe, into the pier gift shop to spend some of his rescue money, he picked up a book about the Coast Guard. He was thumbing through it when he stopped in an old-timey picture of some black men wearing jackets like Richard's. They were standing in front of a building on the Outer Banks. Below it was a picture of, yes, Richard, mustache, beard, jacket, everything. Tucker read, History of Pea Island Life Saving Service. Captain Richard Etheridge was keeper of the Pea Island Life Saving Service, a forerunner of part of what is now the U.S. Coast Guard. This unique, all African American, courageous life saving crew and those who followed saved hundreds of shipwrecked passengers' lives by plunging into the stormy seas and bringing their charges back to safety. Tucker said he shot out of that gift shop toward the restaurant to show his dad the book to prove his case, but what he read next made him stop. Captain Etheridge, born in 1844 on Roanoke Island in North Carolina, died in 1900. Tucker said he read that date 15 or 20 times before it started to sink in. 1900? Richard Etheridge had been dead for almost 100 years. How was that possible? How was it possible? 
the dead man helped him save that guy. Unless Richard was a ghost. He'd been talking to and swimming with a ghost? Okay, so let's pause there. Um, before we read on, let's make sure that we've um, made the notes in the margins that we need to make. Remember, it asks us to explain how Tucker's conflict is resolved. So what was the problem he was having in the beginning and how did things change for him? Remember, he was really small when he was young um, and people called him a lot of names and he didn't like those names, but he never fought anybody because everyone was so much bigger than him. So be thinking about that um, and take some time, maybe pause this video to look back through and figure out how that resolves itself. Okay, and then the second thing, you need to summarize what Tucker learns about Richard in lines 216 to 237. So you're looking at this paragraph down here and this paragraph up here. So go ahead and pause the video and make a summarizing note in the margins about what you learn about Richard Etheridge in those two paragraphs. And the last section, as we read lines 238 to 275, we're going to consider these things here. We want to underline the reason Tucker stops talking about Richard's involvement in the rescue. And we're going to hear that in these lines. And then we want to circle what we learn about the narrator. So um, you will see what I have underlined and you will see what I have circled slash boxed in. Um, I recommend you doing the same. Uh, making sure you have the same stuff underlined or circled slash boxed in, but there might be some other stuff that you want to make note of as well. Okay, so we're right up here. You can believe Tucker hit up the library the very next day and searched for as much information as he could find on Richard Etheridge. There wasn't much, but what he read was that Richard Etheridge was all those great things he had read about and that he still died in 1900. A few years later, when Tucker's folks visited the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island, Tucker found Richard Etheridge's grave and monument. Etheridge's headstone was marked 1844 to 1900. That's when Tucker stopped talking about Richard being involved in the rescue, unless somebody asked. So now, if you run into Tucker Tugboat Willis, ask him about the rescue, and he'll tell you. Then, real carefully, Ask if he ever met Richard Etheridge. He'll tell you, yes, he did, and what he learned. What he learned was that it pays to be polite to everybody you meet, like Tucker was to a man named Richard. You never know when that person might help you. And every time Tucker tells me the story, he tells it to me the same way I told it to you. Seeing how Tucker turned out proved that some mighty things that help folks out in some mighty big ways can come in some mighty small packages. It also proves that good things come to those who wait, like I did. I know because I'm Mrs. Lashana May Willis, Tugboat's wife. Okay. In this last section here, um, this italicized information, this is all not part of the short story. It's extra information that is given to us, historical facts, um, things that perhaps the author based the story on. Um, remember, it is a fictional story, meaning the story itself is not true, but there are some real facts that the author included, um, and then the book is giving us some of those extra facts right here, um, or some more extra facts, I should say. So let's take a look at what it says here. There really was a man named Richard Etheridge, a professional fisherman who was born in 1844 on Roanoke Island off North Carolina a member of the 36th U.S. Colored Troops of the Union Army. He fought at the Battle of New Market Heights in Virginia during the Civil War. And in 1880, Etheridge was hired as the keeper of the Pea Island Life Saving Station on the Barrier Islands, the Outer Banks, of North Carolina. The station continued to set a high standard of performance with its all-Black personnel until 1947 when the Coast Guard closed down the facilities. No one made any formal recognition of the Pea Island Surfman's daring sea rescues until 1996. 
In March of that year, Etheridge and his men were finally acknowledged posthumously, and it tells you on the side here, or I've made a note on the side here, that posthumously means after death. So they were acknowledged after they died in formal ceremonies in Washington, D.C., with a gold life-saving medal from the United States Coast Guard. Etheridge and his wife and daughter are buried on the grounds of the North Carolina Aquarium in Manteo, which maintains an exhibit on these brave men. Okay, so then down here, um, it asks you to discuss this with a partner. Um, you might not have somebody that you can discuss it with, but you can pause the video and think. Um, so think about the historical facts that this gives us. Um, do they add anything to the story? Like, now that you know that some of this information um, was real, and now that you know the rest of the facts, um, or more about the real people, does that make the story more interesting to you? Does it add an intriguing element? Um, does it make you think more deeply about what the author told you? Or do you just feel like, you know, okay, it's interesting, but it doesn't make the story um, better at all. So think about that, pause the video and think about that. Okay, and then down at the bottom, trying to line this up for you, um, your short response. It asks, was Tucker the hero that everyone thought him to be? Or was Richard mostly responsible for the rescue? Cite text evidence to support your opinion. Cite text evidence. That means you should be quoting things or pulling information straight out of the article. Remember, we often talk about acing our answers. You want to turn the question around and, and complete that statement with an answer. And then you want to cite um, text evidence that supports your answer. And the E in ACE stands for explain. So try to explain how the evidence that you're providing connects to or supports um, your answer. This is an opinion question. So um, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. As long as you can back up what you think, you will get the question right. Um, so you should have at least three sentences. Um, I recommend at least five sentences. One, answering the question, telling us who you think is the hero, then giving um, a piece of text evidence, explaining that connection, and then I would cite a second piece of text evidence and explain the connection again. Okay, good luck, you got this, and I'll see you next time.